Alfred. Why did you leave the mouth open? It's an open target, Alfred. And why did you make it that I can't turn my neck? So every time I need to turn, I need to turn my whole upper body. I look up like that. Why did you do it, Alfred? Answer me! Shadowverse. Greetings, I'm Shad, and talking in that Batman voice really kills your throat. That's thematically appropriate. I'm Batman. Just for this video, okay? Because I want to actually analyze Batman's outfit. Because not only is it an outfit, it's armor. And one of the inspirations of doing this video is the recent The Batman trailer, where we see something quite interesting. And it's this scene right here, where we see someone offloading into the chest of Batman with a machine gun. Now, the Batman, it looks promising. I'm a little hesitant. Th th this scene in particular made me just go, because huh. there's a couple things uh, that are uh, a little concerned that I also want to talk about, which also kicks us off into the larger discussion of Batman's armored outfit and the problems, strengths, weaknesses, how to improve it, and, uh, and other things like that. Because also, this clip raises Batman's armor to a new level. Previously, in other iterations of Batman, his Batsuit was armored, but not to that level. We, like, I always understood it as it was a backup, okay? Could absorb a couple of rounds, but he mostly relied upon stealth to survive, and the armor was a backup. At no point in any, you know, Batman, you know, comic, well, maybe in the comics, there's a lot of them, right? But I rarely ever see Batman just deciding to forego stealth tactics and just walk right into a machine gun, you know, bar barrage, like it's nothing. So I'm a little on the fence about that. Now, the thing is though, if Batman really did have super advanced armor that could tank just those shots like that, okay, perhaps there are times where he might just want to intimidate his enemies that is fighting, or he just wants to take the easy way and he walks towards them, tanking the hits. But a suit that's designed to absorb large amounts of gunfire like this, one, it needs to be made out of metal, and granted, the, the suit from the movie The Batman, the recent one coming out, the close-up shots, it looks to be made pretty metal, you know. So, all right, okay, uh, maybe it's made out of really advanced kind of, uh, you know, uh, material that can block gunfire like that. But if such an advanced material like that, that would actually affect or influence the design of the armor as well. So we're gonna, that's what we're talking about here. Now, the biggest pet peeve I've had with Batman's suit from the very beginning there's reference in this skit, and you can see it right now, it's the glaring opening, right here. Uh, like, to me it's nonsensical if the suit is supposed to function like armor. And that's why this scene with the machine gun thing just struck me as nonsensical, because they, they see the muzzle flash, they get enough light to be able to see their opponent, you could say they're panicked and everything, I don't know, after the first few hits, you might realise this is doing nothing. How about I try and, oh, there's an open target right there that is not trying to defend or block. Because usually Batman, maybe he thought like, there's a big vulnerable open target, so he relies on stealth, and, uh, and when he's relying on stealth, and people only have a brief glimpse to try and shoot Batman, it would be very hard to aim for that opening. Even then, I don't think it's justified because it's such a glaring open, like weakness in the armor. But you can try to say, well, people would rarely be able to hit it because of they, they rarely see him and they can only get a, a vague, you know, bead on the target and shoot. And so that's not really going to work and he justified that way. I still don't like that excuse. But in a situation like we see in the trailer, where they're just offloading on Batman, it looks so nonsensical when you have this open target, like, just raise and shoot. And you might be saying, I can't do that because that would kill him. Yeah, that's the problem, <laughs> okay? Um, it, it becomes so obvious that anyone not doing it, it becomes a plot hole because anyone with half a brain would aim for the opening, which is why you wouldn't have it. So the question is, why? Why would you, I can't think of it, is it to eat? Because it's not like Batman needs to eat all the time, and I'm sure he's got, you know, some sandwiches pocked away in his utility belt, but having said that, I hear Batman has just upgraded his, his, you know, menu selection. And in actual fact, I want to show you what I'm eating nowadays. And as luck would have it, it's the sponsor of this video. Hello, Fresh. Usually, Alfred cooks for me, but Hello Fresh makes it so easy that even a crazy mental patient like me can do it himself. All the instructions are on this card. And I'm gonna be cooking creamy honey mustard 
Shake it. My parents always wanted me to eat my veggies, and then they died. I first tried HelloFresh long before they were ever a sponsor, and it was through a similar promo as the one I'm able to offer to you through the sponsorship. I was able to get a free meal, I tried it out, I loved it, and I've been using it ever since. I mean, it's free food, why not give it a go, and it's really delicious. I don't know why there's how much salt left, because I've assaulted so many criminals. So many. So many. And for me, there were heaps of reasons to keep using it. There are so many delicious recipes to choose from each week, and it really did help break up what we were eating. There is this recipe rut that you just naturally fall into where you resort to the easy, quick, tasty recipes, but they usually weren't too healthy. HelloFresh opened up the variety of our diets with really nutritious, healthy, and delicious food. I can add a lot of pepper here, but not out there, because I don't like getting peppered with bullets. My veggies are done. Boiled. My joker was boiled. But he was boiled in chemicals. It made him crazy. All it took was my parents dying to make me crazy. It saves time and is really effortless. HelloFresh offers 50 menu and market items to choose from every week, including vegetarian, calorie smart, and gourmet options. <laughs> it's just heaps of variety. Also, to keep in mind, the holidays are approaching and they can be hectic, but HelloFresh helps keep things simple with recipes and ingredients that cut out grocery shopping and reduces meal prep time so you can spend more time in the festival season with friends and family. These aren't regular instructions. They're bad instructions now. Because when Batman uses something, it becomes part bat. Also, by using HelloFresh, it actually cuts down your food waste by at least 20 compared to grocery shopping. And I've experienced that in my own life. There are many things that we buy when we go grocery shopping that we don't end up using fully in the meals that we make and we end up just throwing out. Now we serve like I serve justice to criminal scum. Potato mash. Oh yeah. I once punched a guy so hard. He became a vegetable. I don't kill though. I do maim and inflict tremendous amounts of pain and leave psychopaths alive to murder hundreds of people after they escape again and again and again. I do endorse capital punishment, just not me to do it. So it's not my fault the Joker is alive. It's the system's fault. I catch him again and again, and I don't just kill that mother! And you can try this out too. All you have to do is go to hellofresh.com slash shadowversity14 and use code shadowversity14 for up to 14 free meals and three free gifts. It's delicious, it's totally worthwhile, and hey, free food. So why not give it a go, and thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. All right, give it a go, guys. Oh man. Oh man. <laughs> it's really good, eh? Oh man. <laughs> Make a good cook, Batman. That is that is one of the thank you. It's one of the perks of HelloFresh. Yeah, the good food. Mm. Mm. Yes. That was very good bad food. But it still doesn't justify the opening, okay? Uh there are a lot of examples from history, that, and this is what I really think, if you actually wanted some type of opening to allow eating or whatever, easier breathing, because uh, helmets can actually be, but modern day ones, the other thing, it would still look awesome, okay? And you might say, they don't want to cover this part of Batman's mouth, because that would stop him from being able to, you know, emote properly. Because, obviously, we've never seen anything in media, comic books, movies, where, like, a full mask People just can't emote when they're wearing full masks, right? I mean, we've never seen that at all, right? I mean, <laughs> sorry, I'm just thinking of the Spider-Man one where he's like, Whoa! And just with that small little eye, like, of course you can! So the excuse that you have to have the mouth opened to convey emotion, that, that, that doesn't work. There are a number of really cool designs that could work, like, just give him a, you know, a plate that, what about a visor? Seriously, imagine this helmet with some bat ears, right, on the sides of the visor, and it was painted black. Even this could almost pass. And if you want to, and whenever you want to eat, 
problem solved. You could give Batman a visor. I mean, visors have been around. We well, even still use them technically on bike helmets, okay? And so they, you could make one that conveys the bat look and it protects you and gives you the function of raising it, okay? See, and the other thing is, Batman sometimes actually has something that he fixes over his mouth, uh, like a gas mask, when he needs it. So just wear it all the time, and that means you don't have to risk breathing in some of the poison gas or whatever before you get it on, it's just on there all the time, and you'll still look cool, you still look like a bat! This is one of the most ridiculous design features on armor I've ever seen! Well, hang on, okay, okay, alright, alright, uh, before you say, there is medieval examples of helmets that leave the bottom part exposed, all right? But they were in the medieval period when it was easier to protect this part. But even, even then, they still knew that that was a vulnerability and they had versions of helmets that covered the bottom part. So it's not like no one was covering the bottom part of their, their face. In the medieval period, you don't have to worry about pinpoint precision bullets, okay? That they can just redirect. It's a lot harder to aim a bow than it is a gun. All right, and even when you're fighting melee, you can protect this part with your weapon and arms a lot easier than against bullet fire. So it is a massive weakness and vulnerability. So the next thing that I want to address in terms of the classic Batman design, and I don't really have it on my bat suit at the moment, and that is the spikes. You, know, you remember how you see Batman spikes on the arms, and he's usually got them on the legs. And in the movie uh, Batman Begins, we actually see it tried to be justified with some functionality, that the League of Shadows ha have the spikes for climbing, gra or not necessarily grappling, and then he uses it at the end to snap a sword, which, if the sword is well made, it is not going to be snapped. You, you have so little leverage from this position. Outside of some ultra-specific situations, those spikes have very little functional utility. And then in the Dark Knight, they again try and justify the spikes with the fact that they can shoot off. It's a very awkward place to have like little bladed things shoot. Uh, if you really want a dedicated blade shooting device, you'll probably have it on the length of the forearm so there's more room for the spring to generate greater velocity. Uh, and uh, again, ultra specific situation where he's getting pinned by the Joker, he shoots the blades off to... Uh, st they don't even injure, they are like... <laughs> really injure, like, not like severely injure, they just stun and then he, and there are other ways you can stun and Batman has other thrown blade things anyway and so the fact that they shoot off, like in my opinion, it's dumb. It doesn't really work and there's very little functional utility in it and so the only reason why the spikes are there is they, they look cool and they do look cool. So if you want to make them out of cloth just for the aesthetic to make you look a bit more intimidating, Sure, and look, not even plastic that are not too pointed so you won't injure someone, fine. But in terms of just finding that they are hard metal to grapple, like, again, when he's sliding down the side of the mountain and he's using him to grab onto things, I mean, uh, Batman has his battering so you can just pull one out and do that and then you have a better lever. It's a very awkward lever, as shown by the fact that when he falls onto the side of the mountain, he almost breaks his arm into because of the awkwardness of the angle that is needed to jam those spikes into the through the snow into some more solid ground. And so again, awkward positioning, there, you can only use them in hyper-specific situations, and even in those situations there are other tools that would get the job done even better. And so overall, the spikes are really dumb. You can keep them for the look, but not for the practicality. Now, you might be saying, what about the two main important spikes? These spikes, right here. These are actually fine, in my opinion. They're not going to be running into people, you know, you're not going to accidentally snag them. They're not actually pointed and used in combat. And uh, I really like what they did in Batman Begins to put antennas into, into the horns. Wing, the, sorry, ears, the bat ears. Uh, so there's room for the antenna. I think that works great. So the next big obvious thing we need to discuss is the cape. This is an interesting topic because something similar to capes have been worn in the past, cloaks. And we've already done videos here on Shadowversity exploring if cloaks get in the way of sword fighting, and they don't really. But Batman, he's not really a swordsman, is he? And he's not necessarily fighting other people with swords, he's grappling. And when it comes to grappling, Having any type of handhold that people can grab is a big problem. Now, could Batman use it to his advantage? They try and grab the cape and then he yanks it back or something like that? Maybe. He's a better fighter. 
I'm not sure how hugely detrimental it would be if Batman relies on his main form of fighting, which is stealth and quick attacks where the opponents don't have much time to try and block and everything, then they'll be too flustered to, uh, or have the frame of mind to think, oh, okay, let me see if I can use that in some time of, you know, grappling technique to put him off balance. I don't think they would really do that. And then there is the big utility of the cape. We actually see two examples. Uh, one is mostly forgotten, and one is was introduced in the Nolan Batman series, and the cape is can form into a glider which is awesome. It gives him some type of low level, not really flight, but gliding capacity, which can increase his range. And that's really cool. I like it. Uh, if you could make it that is bulletproof, that could give him extra protection. But in, uh, I think it's a Batman Forever? The cape is also fireproof, where Two-Face launches a big flaming, you know, thing at him, and Batman covers himself in the cloak, uh, his cape does something, and it protects him from the flame. And, uh, you know, when you want to protect something from flame, having a covering that's further off the skin to get, make a bit of a barrier between the uh, extra heat and the really vital organs like your body and face, that's actually, I think, a really great practical thing, and it kind of justifies the cape a little bit more. There's another big thing that the cape does, okay, and it helps conceal him even better. By having the cape connected to a cowl, and uh, in, the, in a lot of the comic books, the cape wraps around like a cloak right at the front, and he's standing there like he's wearing this big cloak. That almost covers him in a complete sheet of, of blackness, okay? Which would help conceal him in shadows much more. I mean, there is one glaring, you know, more shiny part of his body that would be more, you know, noticeable in darkness. Again, why this mouth opening is so dumb for how Batman fights, his whole methodology, everything. Just wear a full mask, man! But the cape also helps with stealth, so another practical utility that I think can justify the presence of the cape when you combine it with all these other things, even though we have to acknowledge there is some measure of impracticality in combat regards to the cape. Especially if the cape's hanging over your arms and you're wanting to throw punches, the, the actual cloak part, because it's so big and, 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 and fluffy, right, uh, could restrict your arm movements when Batman's wanting to get in there and do the fighting, right? Uh, and so I think Batman, when he actually fights, he would throw the cape always back off his shoulders, hanging directly down his back to get it out of the way as much as possible. And so these are the classic, iconic design elements that we see more often reflected in most bat suits. But now we come to the idea of the bat suit being full, top tier, high caliber bullet resistant armor. To me, the bat suit has never been that level. It's been more, the armor aspects of the bat suit was as a last resort. Though, having said that, in the Justice League, and I forget which version it is now, the bat suit takes it like a full energy blast and protects him from that. And so it's certainly yeah, functioning as a, as a pretty good armor in that respect. But there's a couple of things if we were to just look at this from a wholly realistic standpoint, and that there is no material in existence at the moment which is that light, that thin or flexible, that can resist high caliber bullet fire to that degree. It just can't do it. If you have a look at the actual body armor that exists in the modern day, the stuff that is made to try and protect against higher caliber is either a, one of a few things or a combination of these things. It's either or both really heavy or and really thick. And because of that, having a, like a full body arm protection made out of these plates is wholly impractical because they're so insanely heavy and if you load up someone to that degree they can barely move. So much so that modern soldiers, not all of them, but some even opt to only having the main front plate even though there are side plates that you can add to it, there are some types of arm protection and groin protection but they're heavy, they're cumbersome and they're uncomfortable. With the trailer that we see here, the bullet fire that the armor is absorbing is establishing the fact that there is some type of material this armor is made out of that is insanely good. Like this is sci-fi superhuman, it's magic essentially, this armor. It is incredible to absorb that without what, I, look there might be some damage but I don't think it's damaging, it's just walking forward like it's nothing, okay? This is Iron Man level armor plates. And one of the other reasons why I don't like this is kind of turning Batman into Superman a little bit in terms of his invulnerability to regular bullet fire. Where I've, it's such an odd thing to see Batman just casually walking into bullet fire like that. He's usually never done that, he's more cautious. So again, what makes me a little cautious about the Batman movie coming out, it still could be good, all right? There are, some th there are some promising things as well. But going back to the material, it is super good. Now, thing is though, if this material existed, how does that inform how the armor would be designed? Because there's a couple of special design elements 
that we can learn from history and apply it more accurately to how we would make a futuristic or even modern day armor that's made to protect against bullet fire. And I'm going to suggest some of these design elements right now. One of the interesting things that we see in a lot, not all, but a lot of historical armor is that it is raised a bit off the chest and sometimes it's even kind of pointed a bit and uh, that is made to help uh, blows deflect off the side so uh, it's easier to knock aside and you don't absorb the entire force which reduces the chance of penetration uh, which is a really good thing. And so if they were being mindful of design things that would help the armor function better as full armor, because that's what the Batsuit is now functioning effectively as, thanks to this trailer, I reckon a really great, you know, improvement would be pointing the chest, kind of just right here in this area, even down a bit, to help bullet fire when it hits, to deflect off, especially if it's coming on just front ways like that, it will reduce the chance of penetration and uh, high chances of deflection. Now, one of the biggest weaknesses in armor design is the joints because it's the joints need to be flexible so looking at the you know the joints of the arms the armpits around the groin area where the legs you know bend that was the case with historical armor as well those are the vulnerable areas but they created some ingenious designs to help protect those areas but still keep them flexible and mobile and so one of the things you see around the waist is a fold tacits and things and so that actually protects the legs to be out of bed. Now I'm saying Batman needs them because with modern materials you could make smaller plates that interlock and connect better to allow full flexibility covering those areas and because uh, one of the downsides of the designs because in the medieval period they're limited by technology of course is that like the fold they are pretty bulky okay these larger barriers that protect those open areas mostly but maintain flexibility. That's what they needed to do. But with modern materials, I think we could do it even better. And perhaps that's what they've done with the bat suit here, because we see, you know, plates that look a bit segmented, and so that could allow movement and stuff. And the, you know, the bat suit from Justice League, his armor is more made out of what looks to be like a mesh fiber, but still really protective. And that seems really flexible, almost like a super advanced form of chainmail. But still, some type of protection on those joints, I think, would be very, very important. And these are the, the larger kind of comments that I wanted to make just reviewing the bat suit, okay? Overall for its practicality and its effectiveness as armor as LEC and what things you could do to improve it and the problems that obviously exist in it. Please do share your thoughts in the comments below. Any problems or improvements you think would work really well with the bat suit. I very much look forward to reading them. And of course, I hope to see you here on the next video on Shadowversity. So until that time, farewell.